Ace's defeat to Blackbeard on Bonora Island was a catalyst for one of the most significant plot points within One Piece so far. I am of course talking about the Marineford War. This epic showdown had seen the Whitebeard pirates and all of their allies facing off against the combined might of the world government and the seven warlords of the sea. The war had ended with a major shift to the entire power structure of the seas. During the Marineford War we had the deaths of Whitebeard and Ace along with the fall of the Whitebeard Pirates and the rise of the Blackbeard Pirates. Following this war, Gekko Moria was removed as a warlord, Sengoku had resigned as fleet admiral, and the conflict between Akainu and Aokiji had resulted in Akainu becoming fleet admiral and Aokiji leaving the marines. During this time you have the two year training arc for the Straw Hats and all of these massive events were kickstarted by the outcome of this single fight on Bonora Island. A battle between fire and darkness. Now what if this didn't happen? What if the battle between Ace and Blackbeard had swung the other way with Ace emerging victorious? How would the One Piece world have changed with this one single alteration? Who would have benefited and who would have lost out by this singular change? Let's start by talking about the climax of the fight with Ace's ultimate attack the Great Flame Commandment. This has just finished consuming Blackbeard. Ace despite being fatigued and significantly injured from fighting and unexpectedly powerful opponent, he remained strong enough to defeat the remnants of Blackbeard's crew. Now at this point it should be noted that Blackbeard's crew members were unable to harm Ace, thus indicating either their lack of haki or their haki being much weaker than Ace's, thus preventing them from overcoming his natural defense as a Logia Devil Fruit user. Blackbeard himself acknowledged this during their fight, stating that his crew was no match for Ace's strength. Now given these circumstances, is, Banoro Island would have become the final resting place for all of the Blackbeard crew, thus becoming a pirate group who were defeated before they could truly make their mark on the world. With Ace's mission finally complete now that he has killed Blackbeard and avenged the murder of Thatch, Ace would now set off to return to his crew, likely after a short period of rest in order to recover from his injuries. Ace would then begin his long journey back to the new world. For someone of Ace's capabilities traveling through the first half of the Grand Line would pose no real issues. Realistically, the only threats for him would be the Warlords and the Admirals, neither of whom he is likely to encounter though. This is because Bonaro Island is located fairly deep into the Grand Line near Water 7. Now after crossing the Red Line back into the New World, Ace would eventually rejoin the Whitebeard Pirates, informing them of his successful mission and Blackbeard's demise. This news would undoubtedly come as a great relief to Whitebeard who was initially reluctant to let Ace pursue Blackbeard due to the risks. These risks were further emphasized by Shanks who had personally requested Whitebeard to call Ace back. Fortunately, in this what if scenario, Ace manages to overcome the danger and emerge victorious, swiftly ending this potentially dangerous saga for the Whitebeard crew. Ace's victory would have numerous repercussions, some of which would drastically change future events. The most immediate and significant change is that the Marineford War would no longer take place. The Battle of the Best, as it sometimes is called, was entirely predicated on Ace's defeat and capture by Blackbeard, who had subsequently turned him over to the Marines. Because of Ace's heritage as the son of the Pirate King Goldie Roger, and the Marines' intentions to use him as bait to trap Whitebeard, they had declared that they would execute Ace at Marineford, thus sparking the biggest war seen so far in One Piece. Without these events, everything leading up to, during, and resulting from Marineford Greenford would not occur. Some changes would be relatively minor, while others would have massive long-term implications. First, Jimbei would not be imprisoned in Impel Down for refusing to participate in the battle, likely allowing him to remain as a warlord of the sea. Consequently, he wouldn't have been able to meet Luffy, or at least not at this time, since their encounter happened due to Luffy infiltrating Impel Down in order to rescue Ace. Now, in terms of Impel Down, down, several knock-on effects would occur. Magellan would retain his position as Warden since the breakout would not have happened and 
without Luffy's invasion, the breakout that inspired Crocodile, Ivankov, Inazuma and Buggy to escape would not have happened also. Similarly, Blackbeard wouldn't recruit prisoners from level 6, including Shiryu, Katarina Devon, San Juan Wolf and Vasco Shot. Additionally, Luffy would not lose 10 years of his lifespan due to Magellan's poison hydra attack and subsequent treatment by Ivankov. Some indirect effects of Marineford not occurring would be that the world wouldn't learn that Luffy and Ace are brothers, nor the truth about their fathers. Luffy wouldn't awaken his conquerors Haki, or at least not at this moment, as it happened due to his extreme emotional state when Ace was about to be killed. Similarly, Kobe wouldn't awaken Observation Haki, which occurred following the battle. The Marine hierarchy would remain unchanged without the destruction of Marineford and Sengoku needing to take responsibility for the outcome of the battle, and so he would not end up resigning as Fleet Admiral. Consequently, both Akainu and Aokiji would remain admirals, avoiding their fight for the Fleet Admiral position on Punk Hazard, which had resulted in permanent injuries for the both of them. Now, the final major change would be that Luffy wouldn't be distracted from reuniting with his crew. This poses a slight issue, as the Marineford War and Ace's death had served as the catalyst for the two-year time skip, where the Straw Hats needed to ensure that they weren't immediately defeated upon entering the New World. Now, for convenience and to keep the main story intact, let's assume the time skip still occurs. The utter defeat that the Straw Hats had experienced at the hands of Kizaru, Kuma, Sentomaru, and the Pacifista should still provide sufficient motivation for them to get stronger. Assuming Rayleigh still travels to Amazon Lily in order to meet Luffy before he leaves, it wouldn't be too hard for Rayleigh to convince Luffy that he needs to train. Moving into the time skip, several key events would change as a result of Ace's victory. The most obvious change is that the Whitebeard Pirates would remain a Yonko crew, which means all the territory previously under Whitebeard's protection, including Fishman Island would stay that way. Since Fishman Island would remain under Whitebeard's control and not fall under Big Mom's rule, Jinbei would never have any reason to join her crew. Jewelry Bonnie also wouldn't be captured by Blackbeard and handed over to Akainu, though it is worth noting that she eventually escaped in the actual One Piece timeline. Gekko Moria would likely still be removed as a warlord as the world government had already decided on that course of action and would find or manufacture an opportunity to eliminate him even without Marineford. Now, as I'd mentioned earlier, since neither Aokiji or Akainu would leave their position as admirals, Fujitora and Ryokugyu would never join the Marines to fill the empty spots. Whether this would make the Marines weaker overall is debatable. With Aokiji remaining within the Marines, it would be a considerable boost in strength, and Sengoku retaining the position of Fleet Admiral would likely keep him in stronger shape while freeing up Akainu for other duties. Another significant event during the time skip was the Rocky Pot incident, and although details are scarce, it ended with Blackbeard in charge of Hachinozu, Kobe gaining fame for saving lives, and Trafalgar Law obtaining the rank of Warlord by turning in 100 pirate hearts to the government. Whether Blackbeard's absence would prevent this incident from occurring, or simply alter its outcome is unclear due to the lack of information that we have. One final major change during the time skip would be that Sabo would not regain his memories. Without Ace's death being reported within the newspapers, there would be no massive shock to Sabo's system to trigger him to recover his memories. Now, in this alternative universe where Ace survives, it's difficult to discuss how the One Piece world would look like after the time skip. And this is considering all of the changes that have already occurred. As this new world of One Piece is totally unrecognizable from the one that we are familiar with. In terms of Luffy's journey, events would play out similarly up to Dressrosa with a few minor exceptions. For instance, the rebellion on Fishman Island might not occur as Hody Jones would be less likely to attempt a takeover while the island remains under Whitebeard's protection. Whitebeard would be more proactive in safeguarding Fishman Island 
than Big Mom. This also means no animosity would arise between Luffy and Big Mom as their first interaction occurred during Fishman Island, with Luffy threatening her and taking ownership of the island from her. On Punk Hazard, Luffy would be more vulnerable to Caesar Clown's poison attacks since he wouldn't have the immunity that he acquired from Magellan's poison in Impel Down. Once we reach Dress Rosa, significant changes start to emerge, beginning with the absence of the Colosseum battle. Initially, strong pirates from across the New World were drawn to Dress Rosa in order to fight for the Mera Meronomi. Since in this alternative universe, Ace is still alive and well, the Devil Fruit wouldn't be available for everyone to fight over. Even if Doflamingo somehow found the reincarnated Yami Yami no Mi, it likely wouldn't attract the same interest as the famous Mera Mera no Mi. As a result, Luffy wouldn't enter the Colosseum, meaning that he wouldn't have met Rebecca, and this would have altered the entire arc in unpredictable ways. It also means that he wouldn't encounter Sabo, although Sabo would still be on the island investigating weapon smuggling with the revolutionaries. He had only detoured to the Colosseum upon learning the Mera Mera no Mi was the prize and seeing that Luffy was there. Given the events that had occurred at Dressrosa with the birdcage and the public fight against Doflamingo, it's unlikely that Sabo and Luffy wouldn't meet at some point. Whether this encounter would awaken Sabo's memories is uncertain, but I lean towards thinking that it would. Seeing Luffy in person and interacting with him would likely be enough to trigger his memory recovery, similar to how Sabo regained his memories after seeing a picture of Ace in the original timeline. The Whole Kick Island arc would be minimally impacted by these changes involving Ace, even without Luffy's earlier interaction with Big Mom during Fishman Island, her attempt to take Sanji from the Straw Hats would provide sufficient reason for the arc to unfold as it originally did. One thing that wouldn't change is the ruler of Pirate Island or Hachinozu. With Blackbeard no longer being alive, nobody would conquer the island from Ochoku, thus leaving him in charge. However, it's unclear if Ochoku had any major plans to act on, given his inactivity since the disbandment of the Rocks Pirates. The absence of Blackbeard would also mean that the Hot Pirates wouldn't be defeated following the Wano arc. And speaking of Wano, there would be significant changes, particularly regarding Marco's influence in the arc. Marco might be less available to assist in Wano, and he would remain as part of the Whitebeard crew in this timeline. This could be disastrous as Marco's strength and healing flames were crucial during Wano, saving many from the Ice Oni disease. However, the Whitebeard pirates might take advantage of the situation in order to attack Kaido as revenge for Odin's execution. Ace already wanted to do this, but Whitebeard stopped him due to the potential high casualties of invading Wano and facing off against Kaido's crew. With the Straw Hats, Heart Pirates, and Kid Pirates attacking Wano simultaneously, this would be an ideal opportunity for the Whitebeard Pirates to avenge their former 2nd Division commander. If Whitebeard himself joined the fight against the Beast Pirates, it could change the battle's outcome. Even in his weakened state, Whitebeard would likely be Kaido's strongest opponent, something Kaido would recognize. Whitebeard's interference might prevent Luffy's death in his fight against against Kaido, which would prevent Gear 5 from awakening. Assuming Luffy's death was the specific activation requirement for Gear 5, this is an uncertain point to be honest. Now let me know in the comments if you think that Luffy could actually acquire Gear 5 through enough training and growth without being killed by Kaido on Onigashima. If Luffy couldn't access Gear 5, then he would likely be defeated during the Egghead Island arc, as it seems improbable that he and his crew could survive the assault from Kizaru, Luchi, Saint Saturn, and the swarm of marines attacking the island. All of this relies on the Whitebeard Pirates joining the Wano invasion, which isn't guaranteed. They might arrive after its conclusion like the Red Hide Pirates did. If so, the arc would play out almost identically to the canon of the One Piece story, with Luffy activating Gear 5 to defeat Kaido and Law and Kid combining forces to overthrow Big Mom. When we consider the long-term impact of these changes on the world of One Piece, we can consider some bigger picture questions now that we've officially caught 
caught up to the current timeline with the end of Wano. One of the most pressing questions is whether if Whitebeard would even be alive at this point in time. Whitebeard's failing health was no secret in the One Piece series. If you remember, his first appearance featured a team of nurses and numerous medical devices. While his strength remained formidable, his declining health was evident, particularly during Marineford, where it was clear that he never intended to survive the conflict. If he managed to survive through to the time skip, his health would likely have deteriorated further, and his strength would have diminished significantly. The loss of Whitebeard, either through death or illness, could spell disaster for the Whitebeard pirates in the face of rival Yonko. Additionally, there's the question of Ace's strength following the two-year time skip. Historically, Ace was always marginally stronger than Sabo, at least when they were children. Assuming they maintained similar growth rates, Ace would likely be as strong as an admiral by the current point in the series. This assumption is based on Sabo's confrontation with Fujitora in Dressrosa and his survival against the combined attack of the Gorosei and Emu. Considering Ace is a confirmed Conqueror's Haki wielder, his strength would be further cemented compared to Sabo, who hasn't been shown to use Conqueror's Haki. Given the recent emphasis on advanced Conqueror's Haki being the most powerful type of attack, this would give Ace an additional advantage in terms of strength. During Marineford, Sengoku revealed that Whitebeard had been grooming Ace to become the next Pirate King, despite Ace's wishes to the contrary. If Whitebeard had passed away by this point, it's possible Ace would have become the new captain of the crew, although Marco is also a viable candidate. Between Marco and Ace, they would likely have the strength to solidify the crew's position as a Yonko, preventing the Whitebeard pirates from being overthrown as in the actual series. Interestingly, the Yonko lineup in this scenario would require one new member. With the Whitebeard crew maintaining their position, that would have been taken by Blackbeard, and Luffy taking one of the spots following the defeat of Kaido and Big Mom, there remains one vacant spot. Originally, this position was taken by Cross Guild, which is led by Mihawk and Crocodile, with Buggy the Clown as their figurehead. However, unless the revolutionaries decide to break Ivankov, Inazuma, and the others out of Impal Down, these characters would still be imprisoned. Therefore, it's likely that either Kid or Law's crews would be named as the fourth Yonko. Given Kid's fate shortly after leaving Wano, it might as well go to Law to be honest. Predicting the series progression beyond this point is challenging, and only Oda likely knows how events would unfold from here. Given that Luffy's two main adversaries in the actual series, Blackbeard and Akainu, are either dead or have never encountered Luffy in this scenario, he doesn't have any major enemies that could potentially destroy distract him from his goal of finding the One Piece. Additionally, Luffy would either be allied with or friends with every other Yonko crew at this point, with the Whitebeard pirates led by either Ace or Marco, Shanks still holding his position, and Law likely joining Luffy as the newest Yonko. The world government would be the only true obstacle left in Luffy's path to becoming the Pirate King. I've had a lot of fun theorizing and researching about this what if scenario, but we've reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you guys think about Ace beating Blackbeard? Were there any points in this video that you think that I got wrong, or are there any consequences of Ace's survival that I've forgotten to mention? Please do let me know by leaving a comment under this video, and definitely do continue the discussion as I love reading all of your comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this one, and I cannot wait to see you in my next One Piece Explained video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.